Hi, this is a short demonstration of how to use LM Computing's Elastic Cobalt technology to rapidly convert a Cobalt Kicks application into Java running under a web server. For this demo, we'll use a simple one screen CICS Cobalt application that writes to DB2 and will run it under Wildfly all on Windows. So let's get started. In the Eclipse IDE, we need to create a new Cobalt project. We'll call it online and we'll mark it compatible with our Elastic Transaction platform. And this will configure the project as a Kix application. Now we need to add our source code. So I'll drag in the COBOL file and add it to the project. I'm going to drag in our BMS file and put it in our resources folder. I'm also going to add the one copybook we have and we'll put that in the copy library. Now we can already see we have some errors in the COBOL source code and the editor will tell us what those errors are. Uh, and this is because we don't have all the copybooks. Uh, we need the copybook from the BMS. So let's go ahead and generate that. We'll right click on the BMS, choose to generate the copy file. That's now given us an extra copybook. We'll recompile the project and those errors should go away. Great. Now we do need to configure the project um, with some extra settings. We can do that in a couple of ways. We can choose the project properties or we can add an eCobal directives file, which is what we're going to do. So we create a new file called eCobal.dir. And in that, we'll put the directives that we want to use for this application. There they are. We'll save that away. Great. That's the application uh, built. As you can see, um, it's taken the COBOL and it's actually generated our Java code uh, that corresponds to that. To that COBOL and then Eclipse will go ahead and compile that Java um, into Java classes which is what we'll package up and deploy over to over to Wildfly. In order to deploy the application we need to create a deployment project which will hold all of the target specific settings. So to do that we create a new project in Eclipse uh, and it's an ETP project we'll call it deploy and now we're going to configure all the settings for this deploy project uh, in order to deploy to uh, uh, to Wildfly. So first of all, we're going to set the sys ID. This is how we'll reference the project uh, as a URL. We'll call it ONL. We're going to give it an application ID. We'll just call it Kicks Demo, and tell it that the the project that we're going to be deploying is this one called Online. I'll apply that. We now need to set up our transactions. We need a couple of transactions. We need the init transaction. And that's the uh, the Java program that it will run um, when an init transaction is uh, is fired. And we need a transaction called ONLD, as that's referenced inside the application, running the same program ID. We'll apply both of those. The final settings we have to make are the uh, the SQL driver. Uh, now, if we were if we were in a large project here um, and maybe using uh, SQL connection pooling. We could set this up in Wildfly itself, but as this is a small uh, contained demo, we'll actually set it in the uh, in the project properties. So let's add a add a driver here, uh, and we're just going to specify all the connection properties. So I'm going to copy and paste those in. Here we go, and then just the uh, the database driver name. And then again with the driver, we could put that on the path somewhere that Wildfly would be able to find. Um, but to keep this this demo simple we're just going to add it to the project itself um, so we'll put it in a lib directory in the uh, in the web inf folder and um, wildfly knows to uh, knows to look for it there so we'll create a folder called lib and we'll just drag that uh, that db2 driver in there okay and we're ready to uh, deploy the project uh, we have a couple of housekeeping tasks to do we need to start wildfly so it's ready to uh, to allow us to deploy to and we've also got to set up db2 um, so we're going to create a db2 table here i've got the uh, uh, the command ready to go we'll copy the command in there we go there's a table created we'll just do a quick select from it make sure uh, it's uh, it's there Okay, good, and no records in it. All right, let's start uh, Wildfly. We're going to start Wildfly uh, from the command line in debug mode so that we can actually uh, connect to Wildfly and, uh, and debug our application. Obviously, we could start this as a service in a in a larger system. So we'll uh, we'll kick off the Wildfly. 
and uh, and that's starting up. So while that's starting up, let's go back to uh, Eclipse. And in order to deploy this application, we just right click our deploy project, choose export, and we'll export it using the Elastic Transaction Platform Deploy Wizard. Uh, and here's the file that we're going to generate. It's a WAR file. Um, and we're going to put it straight in the deployment directory for Wildfly, and that'll get automatically deployed for us. So we'll click Finish on that. It'll generate that WAR file for us. Let's go back to the Wildfly um, application, and we should see that start to deploy. OK, and we can see it's created that registered web context, ONL, which is what we're looking for. So let's run the application. And here's that BMS generated in real time. So we'll, uh, we'll create a new record, 3456, click PF5, and there we go. We've got uh, SQL return go to zero, so that looks pretty good. Let's just go do a quick uh, select on that table, and there we can see our new entry. So um, that's pretty simple. Let's, uh, let's look at debugging this. So in order to debug this, let's go set a breakpoint in, uh, in our application. In fact, we've got one set uh, just before the exec SQL. In order to debug this, we right click our project and we're going to debug it with a with a new configuration. I've got one set here ready to go. Um, it's actually a, uh, a remote COBOL application type. You can just see it there. Uh, I created one called online. Uh, it's going to connect to port 8787. So we'll just click debug and that's going to connect to Wildfly and get ready to uh, receive information from us. So let's give this a reset. Okay. We'll create a new one. We'll call the record fill and um, 34567 PF5. And we can see Eclipse has uh, fired into debug mode and we've stopped on uh, on this line where the breakpoint is. Now, obviously, we're debugging COBOL here. Uh, actually, running under Wildfly is Java. So, part of the uh, Elastic COBOL platform allows us to show you stepping through the COBOL despite the fact that at runtime it's actually stepping through Java. Obviously, you could step through the Java as well, um, but this can be useful if it's, a, if it's a COBOL application programmer attempting to debug the application. So, we'll step a couple of times. There's the exact SQL. Uh, let's check that SQL code. We can hover over and look at results. Again, it's another zero, so we'll continue stepping down. We'll just let this program run now. Uh, we can see uh, this is returned um, with another zero. Let's go check what's in the in the database. And there's our second record. So um, a very simple application, obviously. Uh, one, one CICS screen, um, one COBOL program. But the techniques for this or a hundred or a, a, a thousand screen program are exactly the same. Uh, you take the COBOL, you take the copy books, you take all the source associated with those, you drag it into the Eclipse project. We turn that COBOL uh, into Java uh, using our transpiler technology. Uh, Eclipse then compiles that to, uh, to Java class that we can deploy under a, under a web server. Uh, hopefully this demo was useful. Uh, if you'd like to learn more or contact us, um, please go to www.heirloomcomputing.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.